Okay, so this is a new video on how to set up your uh, floating head on the Z. Uh, the last video I made, it was a vertical video. Um, I hate that as much as anybody else, so I figured I'd make a new video. Um, my Z originally actually wasn't set up correctly, so this gives me a chance to, one, do it, and to show you guys also how I do it. Um, so, if you've gotten this far, I'm assuming that you've already calibrated the Z axis uh, with your steps and everything, and also with your driver that you've put in the, uh, on your piano switches. You have everything configured the way it should be, uh, based on whatever motor you have. Um, I will put my uh, motor information and everything in the description so that you can compare yours with mine. Okay, so um, you want to drive the torch head down on a surface that's really stable. For example, this one right this piece of metal that I have on here isn't exactly flat because of all the slats. So I needed to drive it down onto the, the slat to where I know it won't move whenever it gets down to the base. Uh, then what I do is I put a thin piece of material, like a piece of paper basically, up underneath there. Let's see if I can zoom in so that you can... It's not going to focus. Oh, there we go. So that basically I can see how much space I have in between. So right now I can still move the paper. But now I'm going to drive it down to where the paper will not move anymore. Just barely. So, now let's test it. And it is on there. Um, also what you have to make sure is, obviously if you have a floating head system, you have a, um, a spring-loaded uh, faceplate where your torch attaches to. Basically what this does is whenever it hits the material, like right now, uh, it's down at zero, so what would be considered zero. So what I would do then is set this to zero, so that then, now I can drive up and see how much play I have between my theoretical zero and what this is here. So how do we do that? Well, now that I have it on zero, uh, I'm going to continue to drive the torch head down just slightly until my uh, in shelf or my in switch clicks. And it just did. So then I look at this difference here, that's uh, 2.5 millimeters, which is a little bit less than, uh, well, actually a millimeter less than what I had last time. So now I can drive back up, and I can see that it clicked on us again. And then I drive it back down just to test it. Yeah. So what I do now is I take this value, I open up sheet cam. So now in sheet cam I can go to my machine, my post processor. And in my post processor I'm using uh, Mach 3 Plasma THC with Scribe and Backlash Compensation. And I have edited it. Uh, if I want to change something else, I go to edit post, make the screen a little bit bigger, and I have here all of my different um, offsets. For example, uh, switch offset for this uh, z floating Z axis, we're going to change that now to our new value of 2.5. And then below here, this is my offset um, for my scribe. Basically, it's the offset between this point and this torch head. So, once I've changed that, I want to save the program, like so. Then I go... I can close it out now. So now whenever I create a new file uh, to cut, it will overwrite everything in uh, with these new offsets. 
and that's how you set up your, your torch. So what does the code look like uh, once I've run it? Um, let's see, I can open up something recent. And when it comes down to this Z here, uh, basically this is the torch, um, the floating torch function. Um, you can see here once it reaches zero, uh, basically once this switch has been activated, so basically it drives down, drives down, once it makes contact with that switch, that knows, oh, uh, now I'm at zero. So the next line of code is then this offset, and it used to be 3.2 millimeters, but now with the new offset uh, and the new code, whenever I regenerate an, a new um, line of code for whatever file that I'm running, this will now say 2.5 millimeters. So as the new offset, the 2.5 millimeters will then drive back up. And then it lets Mach know, okay, that's, that's where the new offset is. And let's say if you're cutting for plasma, um, you want around a 3, 3.8 or 3.4 or so. Um, starting height for your first cut to make the hole and then Mach will then tell the machine to drive down to 1.5 millimeters uh, assuming that you're cutting three millimeter steel like what I have here on the table uh, and then you'll have a consistent cut height of 1.5 millimeters and that's basically how that works and then once it's finished cutting uh, the torch head will drive back up uh, go to the next location and this whole process of the offset basically starts all over again um, it's either fast or slow, depending on how you have your your uh, your Z set up. Mine's actually running kind of slow, um, so you can kind of see how slow it would actually move um, when it's running. Yeah, and I basically have it running a little bit slower just so that uh, it's easier for the uh, torch height control to catch up and follow the hysteresa that I have. Anyway, that's how to set up your floating head in Mach 3 and on your machine, assuming you have um, a spring-loaded faceplate like I have, and that's it.